So most of you have already had experience with yin yoga. You've already done yin yoga before. And if you have not, the poses are kind of easy poses. I mean, easy in terms of getting your body into the pose. Um, but it is challenging in the way that um, yin yoga um, asks you to stay in that pose for a long time, really experience that pose, let your body feel that pose. And it really gives you a lot of space to experience the pose. There's also fabulous benefits. I mean, besides the relaxation and the centering aspects, it's really good for the joints. Um, it's really good for circulation. Um, what it's basically doing is giving your body a chance to get used to, you know, they talk about muscle memory, except it's more than that. It's just overall soft tissue memory of staying in that pose and letting the body open up into that pose, right? Because sometimes if you do a pose really fast, really quickly and come out of it, the benefits kind of go away quickly too. So um, this isn't about strength training, like our normal flow has a lot of strength training in it. This is all about surrendering to the feeling of the pose and um, really going inside. So, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do approximately an hour, maybe even a little bit less of the poses, and then uh, a meditation that centers on self-acceptance self-forgiveness, self-compassion, self-love. Um, the Autumn Yin Yoga, which if you missed it, is now on my YouTube channel, so you can check that out if you want. Um, but after that, after that one, um, one of uh, the participants asked, could you do another one about, instead of forgiving others and resentment, that's what was in the autumn one, about like, you know, taking that to ourselves. So that was my challenge, and that's kind of what I created in the meditation. And of course, as usually as usual, the Shavasana meditation is optional. Some people love it, other people it's not for them, and I, I'm fine with you leaving before. Um, welcome. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna hold these poses. Now, let me just tell you, I'm gonna do it here. And then when it comes time for the meditation, I'm gonna just move because this isn't comfortable being down on the ground. And I'm just gonna take the computer and sit up on a chair and, and go through that guided meditation. Okay, let's begin. So as many of you know, um, I use I use my phone for a timer. So we hold each of these poses for two to three minutes. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're inside of a pose and you're just living there for two or three minutes, it feels like a long time. And that's part of the space that gets created when you're that quiet and you're not moving for, for a while in those poses. Okay, so let us begin in easy pose. Now, I forgot to say props are necessary in yin. And what I said to you guys is four pillows. And I forgot to say pillows that don't squish down to nothing. So if your pillows are too squishy, you might want to switch them out for something that's a little less squishy. It's okay if they're squishy, but then you're going to need more pillows because we're going to kind of fall down into these pillows. Also, um, some kind of blanket that you can roll up, like jelly roll style, you know what I mean, like that, and then I'll, I'll show you how to roll your, your blanket when we get to that. For now, we're going to be in easy pose, but in yin yoga, you want something propped under your hip, so take one of your pillows or your blanket and place it under your hips, and this is going to allow you to more easily square your hips. And when the hips are lifted, the legs can kind of open up more and just kind of drape open in front of you. Now this is called easy pose. For some people, it's not easy. If it's not easy for you, get your feet in front of you and, and do it that way. All right, a nice quiet, easy pose here, and we will begin.
So this is just about coming inside your body and feeling it. All right. So as you inhale and exhale, if you want to, you can inhale up the spine. And then exhale, let the shoulders drape down towards your mat, toward the floor. Eyes are closed and soft. Go to the inner thighs, feel them. If you're clenching, if you're gripping in the inner thighs, let go. Relax your jaw, feel your breath. Really just beginning to discover that quiet, open space. And then this is also a good place to do some scanning, some checking of the body. Just check where you're holding tension. Are you holding it in your belly, maybe in your heart center? Or maybe physically, shoulders or neck, just really concentrating on those areas, just observing them as you breathe into them, and they will naturally begin to release. Arm bones fall directly under the shoulders. So if you've got your arms too close, pull your hands back a bit so the elbows drop straight down towards your mat. All right, slowly opening your eyes, and then stay where you're at <coughs> with your hips picked up in an easy pose, and then just grab some pillows, place them in your lap and in front of you. I'm going to go sideways. That's going to be easier for you guys to see. All right. So, so I've got my hips propped, and that way they can be nice and straight. And then I just stacked a bunch of pillows. Just to get some pillows in front of you. And then all you need to do is come forward. So think about like kind of like just rolling forward, just opening your body into the pillows, dropping your head. All right. So think about kind of like, okay, this is butterfly pose, but think about bear and hibernation kind of thing. I mean, this is all about the winter and winter energy. So just fold over onto yourself. Now, if folding over onto yourself like this bothers your feet, if you're pressing into your feet too much, try removing the pillow from your hips. Or possibly moving the feet. All right, here we go. Just drop over, release. This is really gonna open up the spine, the lower back, back body here. Now I forgot to mention, if you, um, just stay with it, but if you notice your mind wandering outside your body and outside the experience, that is completely normal. Don't beat yourself up for that, please. Instead, just gently draw awareness back into the experience. Let your shoulder blades slide apart. Feel how nice and open the spine is. You've got a big C curve in your spine. Nice opening in the lower back, upper back. Now if it bothers you to put your head straight, you can turn your head to one side.
again, look if you're holding any tension in your inner thighs. If you are, unlock that. And that is also going to unlock a nice opening through the lower back and that opportunity. All right, and in these poses, stay where, you, stay where you are. In these poses, if you find that you're kind of like zoning out into your mind space instead of staying in the body, or if you feel a little impatience with the body, like, oh, I just, this is taking too long, or I wish this felt better, surrender to the pose. Um, stop trying. Instead, fall more deeply into the pose. So do give yourself those types of gentle messages. All right, coming out of that, coming out of that hibernating bear pose, I'm gonna prop our hips if they're not propped. I took my pillow out from under my hips, putting it back in. Okay, now typically I don't do this in the yin practices, but let's get the neck because sometimes the neck, which is associated with mental energy, especially if the neck hurts, you know, there's a lot going on in the mind. Let's just kind of release the neck for a few moments here. So sitting in a nice straight pose, spine is straight, legs are open to the sides. Lift the right arm gently, bend the elbow, take the left side of the head, and just take your right ear towards your right shoulder. And then just let the left arm drape down toward the ground or grab the top of the thigh. Not grab, but just place the hand there gently. All right, so this is a yin pose, which is total surrender. And you'll notice that with the right arm there, it adds a little bit of weight to the head, which helps with the left neck release. But you're going to have to really kind of Work more deeply in terms of releasing that right shoulder and that right arm. Make it real, real heavy. So almost make it as if it's just a prop and not part of your body. Breathe into that wonderful opening on the left side of the neck, top of the left shoulder. Unlock your jaw. You can open your mouth here. And gently release, take the head back to center. When it comes back to center, feel the skull bone sit at the top of the spine, let it rest nice and evenly. And then take the left arm up, take the right side of your head. We're gonna get the other side of the neck. All right, now if it was too much for you to go from one side to the other, if you feel like that left side of the neck is, you know, complaining a little bit, you can just stop, kind of roll your head side to side a little bit and then come into this. Sorry about that. Keep going here. And then feel that right shoulder drop away from your ear, making more space. Bring your head back to center. 
All right, and then now just take the head forward, chin to the chest, drop your shoulders away from your ears, and let's stay here for a few minutes. Again, relax your jaw, your eyeballs. Just letting that head flop forward, releasing back in the neck. Yeah, let the head drop even more. Let it grow even more heavy. So as you release into this, you'll find the head fall forward just a little bit more. And slowly bring your head back to neutral position. Okay, now, um, support from under the hips, take it away. Legs come straight in front of you, all right? And bring them out about hip distance. Now, if you need to bend the knees, that's absolutely fine. We're gonna come forward in a seated pose here. So rather than that hibernating bear slash butterfly pose, we're gonna come and be seated forward. So get some nice pillows stacked at the top of your legs and just work your arms forward, all right? And then don't worry about a straight back here. Don't worry about a straight back, but keep your sitting bones firmly placed into your mat, and then you just drop right over your legs. Okay, so you're just folding yourself in half. This is a beautiful one for releasing the backs of your legs and the hips and the lower back, the entire spine. Now the arms, make them come in a real comfortable position. All of these poses are about getting comfortable. So even if you don't look like me in terms of where you place things, that's fine. Like customize for your body. Again, if you don't like your head going straight into the pillows, you can turn your head to the side. And if you do that, turn it to one side and after about a minute to the other side. Don't count it, just approximately. Use your breath to open the lower back, to open the hips and the backs of your legs. Full deep breaths. And you may be fortunate enough to feel those places in your body that are resisting. And if you feel those places, you've located it. And that's just a wonderful thing. So you can take your awareness to that place that feels resistance, right? To the place that feels like it's tight. All you do is you observe it. You internally check out that feeling and then direct your breath to that part of the body.
and then gently sitting up, coming out of this pose, staying in a seated pose. Okay, so bend your right knee to the side. You guys know this one. All right. Now, your hips are facing forward. They're not turned to the right. Your left leg is coming straight out of your hip. So you want to get everything nice and set up in terms of the bones, the, the framework of the pose before we move into stretching the, lot, the soft tissues. Okay, now on top of that right leg, put a couple pillows or more. Okay, same thing. You just kind of want to puff it up on the top of that leg so that when you come over that leg, now remember, keep that right knee out to the side as much as you can. Now, another thing is some people may want to take a pillow and put it under your right knee. Okay, these props are for you to use. So basically, you're going anywhere that might be a little challenging and putting pillows under there because once you fall into the pose, you want to be as relaxed as you possibly can. Here we go, left leg, fall into it. And then another thing, when you're in these poses, what you can do, you get various feelings in various parts of the body, right? So you, you can just kind of be like, oh, okay, there's my right lower back. I feel that. I'm going to breathe into that. Okay, there's the under part of my left thigh. I'm going to breathe into that. You know, so you can do this kind of moving around that internal space, that experience. It doesn't have to be just one spot that you're on. And slowly coming up here, and we're simply going to switch sides. So right leg comes forward, femur, thigh bone, right out of the hip, straight out, not to the right or to the left, left knee to the side, left sole of the foot pushing into the inner thigh or toward it, okay, got your Got your framework down, got your skeleton where it needs to be. Now look for your comfy padding. <clears throat> All right, and then fall over, right over. So it's like you're looking for this place that's, you know, fairly comfy and then you're dropping into it. Now the breath is a strong, strong tool for many things, right? But it's really strong in yin because using the breath and being aware of how the breath changes the sensation of your body while you're in that pose is a beautiful, beautiful way to open up into it some more. So add the breath to the experience.
notice what you're doing with your shoulders, with your upper back. Are you kind of crunching your shoulders up towards your ears? If you are, soften them down into the pillows and let the wing bones slide away from each other. All right, and then releasing from that. All right. Okay, so now come into table pose. Okay, and we're going to use table pose to set up for a supported child's pose. All right, so you're in table, okay? So the first thing that you want to do, if you know, if you want to take your hips back, okay? If you can rest your hips deeply down towards your heels, that's fine, and you probably don't need a pillow back there. If you cannot, or even if you want to try, take a pillow, place it across your heels, you may even need two, press back, Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay, I'm going to use that even though I can't get my hips back. So you can place that pillow there. Okay, now take a bunch of pillows, get them right in front of your knees, over your thighs, bunched up under your body, and then let your torso sink into them, especially your heart. Feel your heart be supported. Now take the arms to the sides with elbows bent, your face is straight down, or if you want your face to the side, if that feels better, go for it. So get into a nice, comfy, supported child's pose, and we're going to be here for three minutes. All right, here we go. Okay, and then again, of course, you've got the spine stretched and open. You can take your breath up and down your spine if you'd like to increase that spinal stretch. And with every exhale, drop your heart more deeply down into your pillows. And when you exhale and you drop your heart, let your shoulder blades fall apart from Okay, now before you get up, just rock your hips from side to side. Keep them low. Just rock from side to side. That might give you a good, nice release of the lower back. 
and come back up to table pose. Move the pillow that's above your heels. Take your knees out toward the sides of your mat and over the sides of your mat and bring your big toes together, cobbler pose. Do you see what I'm doing? So I've got my knees, there we go. I've got my knees spread apart. I've got my toes together. And now I'm pushing my hips back toward my heels. And again, you can place something over your heels here. So the difference is you've got your knees spread apart here. So there's much more of a groin opener. Okay, again, you can get those pillows underneath. Okay, now for this one, take your arms to the sides. Bend your elbows back and really feel a dropping of the heart, of the chest, into your pillows. And then drop your elbows down toward the ground. So in this one, your head can be side or facing forward. Just don't look up. Right? Because you want the neck as relaxed as possible. Now, as you stay within these poses for a while, you may feel kind of an internal shifting, releasing of the body. So if that happens and you feel like you need to move something just a little bit, or even just like for me, I felt like a release and I was able to drop my hips a little bit more. You know, things like that. You might notice these little fine changes that the body goes through as it relaxes more deeply into the pose. And slowly come out of this. Now all of these, you want to come out of them nice and slowly because you really, the body is really stretched and relaxing in some places. Okay, so now onto our backs. Supine position here. All right, so first just come on your back, but before you do actually take some pillows and place them to the side of you, because we're gonna need those eventually when you're done on the ground. So make, put them somewhere where you can grab them, okay? Let's just bring our knees up to our chest just for a nice lower back release and hip release here. All right, now bring your arms out to the side in a T position. We're gonna do a spinal twist here. Pull your navel down toward the ground so that you can feel your spine touching the ground. Now, we use the pillows as props here for the legs to fall into. So you're going to want to take a pillow or two and put it to your left side. Let's go to the left first. So one or two pillows, it's up to you, it depends how you know how close you can get your legs to the ground. And if you don't, keep another pillow handy in case you need it. Okay, and we come into a twist just like we normally do with a nice straight spine. If you're not straight in the spine, walk your hips away from your shoulders. Okay, all right. And then bring your legs gently together and drop them to your left side. Let them fall into the pillow or pillows. All 
All right, and then we're going to stay here. Now in this position, in yin, you can bring your arms down a little bit from a T position, a little closer to your body. Palms are up so the shoulders are released. And breathing here, nice and deeply. Notice you have your torso twisted, your lower back twisted. Also notice how each individual pose gives you a particular feeling. You get a particular emotional feedback from these poses, as well as the physical one. Okay? Whenever we're twisting the spine like we are here, there's a bit of an energizing feeling. Now we're in yin, so it's going to be a real gentle energizing, but it's still an energizing feeling. Let your legs be even heavier. Totally release into the pose. That's what yin is about, dropping into it. Notice the changes in the sensations as you stay in the pose for longer periods here. Experience your right leg, that leg that's on the top, and let it grow heavier. Just really, really relax the right hip, the right lower back, and the right thigh. And then just squeeze your legs together, pull your navel back, bring your legs back to center, switch the pillow to the other side. And before you go into the other twist, bring your, bring your shins up and then rock your hips side to side and walk your hips away from your shoulders because you want to lengthen your spine. Then you get it nice and straight. Then you pull the knees in again, open the arms a little lower than a T. And then slowly, legs drop to the right side this time. Take your time. All right. So one of the keys to getting maximum twist is coming into it slowly. Right? You give the body time to adjust to the twist, to the sensation. Versus having the body push away, right? Kind of stop you instead of trusting it. Here we go. Nice. Twist to the other side. Feel your torso breathing. Expanding with your inhales. Let your exhales release you more deeply into the pose. So if you close your eyes, you're probably going to notice that nice feeling that a twist gives to your mind body. It's very relaxing and soothing. Of course, a yin, yoga, so yin yoga in general is like that, but twists especially give that calm, balanced feeling.
and slowly bringing your legs back to center. Crossing at the ankles, flicking the feet up towards your ceiling, down to the ground to bring yourself back to seated pose. All right, now, ooh, I love this one. Heart opener. Okay, big heart opener, big chest opener right here. Okay, so take your blanket. Here's where we do that jelly roll with the blanket. Okay, so you want your blanket to be basically, approximately, a little longer possibly than the length of your spine. Okay, so, and you want it to be in a roll. All right, so I'm gonna put my blanket, it's in half, and then another half, and then another so just get it into some kind of a nice square or rectangle and then once you have it just figure out about you know even eyeball it is that about as long as your spine and if it's not you know make it a little longer and then roll it because what you want in fact some of you may have a lumbar spine a lumbar pillow and you can use that so see how I rolled it into a jelly roll Okay, so everyone's blanket is going to be different, and then I'm just going to kind of check it out to see if it fits. So pillow on the top of that jelly roll, because that's for your head. And then I'm going to start with my lower back, like sitting bones, and then I'm going to just kind of fall in, whoop, <laughs> not off of it, fall onto it. Make sure it's right under my spine. Now this is not rocket science, okay? What you wanna do is you just wanna make sure that, that that jelly roll is supporting you like between your shoulder blades at the top of your spine all the way down to the bottom. And then of course you can always kind of work around it. And then you get that pillow set up so that it's giving you nice support in your neck. Okay. So you guys got that kind of working on that? And then if you can see by looking at me, you know, you've got your, your, your front body just spread wide open. It can just kind of fall over that jelly roll. So you get this really nice heart opening. It's really great for the shoulders and the back too. Okay. Now, what about your legs? You've got options, okay? You can take your feet to the floor and let your knees come in and rest on each other. Remember, we're gonna be here for a good three minutes, okay? Possibly even four, so get comfy. Arms, well, you know what you can do? You can put pillows, I'm gonna use my little pillows, under my hands, just so my hands are in a nice comfy place and they don't hit the ground, but they can hit the ground too, that's fine. Okay, then I'm just gonna move my glasses because annoying me I'll step on them. Okay, so yeah. So you're feeling pretty good? Just kind of relaxing into that jelly roll? Okay, so like I said, the legs, it's up to you. So you can have your feet on the ground and the knees into one another. A little, a lot of visual distractions here. Move this out of the way. Okay. Or what you can do is you can take the soles of your feet and open your knees to the sides. Now, if you do that, you might want to bring that jelly roll, like so that it just stops right after your lower back, and you kind of fall over it a bit. Just feel it out. Okay, or you can just place your feet flat on the ground without bringing the knees in. Okay, so you've got options for the legs. I want you to get your legs in a place where it feels good. All right, so get comfy here. We're gonna be here for four minutes and the arms are up. But don't bring the arms way up because you want your shoulders relaxed. Bring them down a little bit. So this is all about releasing from the heart and here we go. Mm. 
Now, of course, what happens to me is eventually I bring my knees up. Okay, so that's up to you. So here we go. Just relax into it. Now with this one, bring your breath to your front body, the front of your torso, from your pubic bone all the way up to your chest. And breathe into your front body. And when you exhale, let the shoulder blades fall down. Another thing, make sure you have enough support for your head so that your head isn't falling way back and it's crunching the back of your neck, compressing the back neck. Head should be really comfy and so should the neck. These are all passive stretches. So it should feel nice and comfortable. You just drop into this. Now, if you find your mind wandering a lot and have difficulties bringing it back in, what about if you just followed your breath and stayed with your breath, right? The breath anchors you to the here and now. So just follow your breath. Let your awareness follow your breath. Inhale. Exhale, that easy. Just inhale, exhale. Let your wing bones fall even closer to the floor. Sink more deeply into your rolled blankets. Notice how this pose really frees the mind space. Right? When the heart opens, the mind opens. So here we go, just kind of fall off the side of your jelly roll and slowly pick yourself up. All right, coming into our last pose before Shavasana, and this is a supported Sphinx pose. So rather than end with, like we normally do in our in our vinyasa, in our slow, or flow, flow, we normally end in, um, with a cobra, right toward the end, we're going to do sphinx, which is basically a supported kind of cobra modification. Okay, so to do this, let's see, pillows 
and everything to the side. Okay? We're going to come down, belly to the down, belly, belly down into your mat. Okay, so Sphinx Pose, when it's unsupported, is like this. Now, extremely important, legs are hip distance apart or closer. Now it's more spread. And feet towed in for sure, not towed out. Some people have a natural tendency to tow their feet out. Tow them in because that is going to relax your lower back and your hips. Okay, in a sphinx pose, if you look, your elbows fall directly under your shoulders and your arms are shoulder width apart, so they're making an 11, okay? Now, in a supported sphinx, we're going to take some pillows and we're going to like, see how I'm pushing them all the way back to my belly underneath? So it's not only in the front of me, it's also on my torso, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these pillows, and so are you, just tucked under your body. And you're just basically going to hang out here in supported sphinx pose. Now, if your lower back is bothering you after those twists, come on up and just do a little retuning of the lower back. Pick your belly up, round your tailbone south, press your hips back just to release the lower back a bit. All right, and then back into your Sphinx Pose. All right, let's do just a little adjustment. Pick up your pubic bone, roll it up towards your belly, drop it back down just to open the lower back a bit more. All right, and here we go, staying in Sphinx. Now, in the Sphinx Pose, okay, Kind of bring a sense of it's ease, right? We're still we're still doing a yin, but this kind of like, you know, think about a sphinx, like majestic, right? Kind of like this is my body, this is my heart, this is my mind. Okay, just kind of really coming within here. Shoulders are relaxed. Kind of stirring up a feeling of claiming, right? Claiming your body, your mind, your soul, it's yours. Now, if your shoulders are feeling like they're getting tired, you might start picking them up towards your ears. Press them down and back. Think about putting your wing bones deep and low into your back space. All right, and just before we leave this pose, let's just put a little energy into it. Press down into your hands and into your arms. Push your heart forward. Send your shoulders back. Press your belly down. 
your hips down, your pubic bone and the tops of your feet toward the ground. Just get that nice, firm, grounded energy here and release. All right, pushing up into child's pose and then just back into a little table pose, excuse me, to child's pose just to release here. Okay, now you have all these wonderful supports for Shavasana. So make your Shavasana nice and comfortable. One thing I can recommend is like a flat pillow behind your head or rolled up under your neck. Another thing too is if you ever, ever had a massage, you'll know how they like to tuck things like under your legs so you can have a little bend in your legs here. You can also have those little pillows under your hands. All right, so Shavasana, I'm gonna go in Shavasana. I'm gonna, of course, like I told you, I have to sit on a chair, so I'm gonna move the, the computer with me. But just fall into a nice Shavasana pose, which is a nice, easy pose. We're just totally relaxing to the ground. Okay, most important thing is you want your chin toward your chest, so the neck is relaxed. You want your palms up and not down. And you don't want your arms to be on the sides. Or excuse me, you want them on the sides, but you don't want them to be as high as your shoulders. Bring them down. Get them in a comfortable position. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a, a position that's nice and comfortable for your shoulders. So just get cozy in Shavasana. So eyes closed, all right, so I'm going to begin here just reading a little something that I found. And I don't know if you're familiar with Joseph Campbell. Um, he was big, maybe in the 80s. I mean, he's still well known, but he is a um, comparative religion, comparative mythology. Um, he was a professor, but he also just did a lot of interesting things that made it more or less into mainstream about um, looking at different cultures and, and um, he, he really found some beautiful things and has some really nice work. But here's one of the things that he wrote. Perfection is inhuman. Human beings are not perfect. What evokes our love? What I mean love, not lust, is the imperfection of the human being. So when the imperfection of the real human peeks through, say to yourself, this is a challenge to my compassion. And then try, and something might begin to get going. Okay? So when I thought about self-acceptance and self-forgiveness and that kind of rolls into self-love, I kept coming back to this notion of perfection and how that is just a huge obstacle for so many people to experience self-acceptance. And I mean radical self-acceptance. I mean really accepting the whole of who we are. 
And then a little more deeply, I started thinking about perfection and how we're given messages throughout our entire life about perfection and directly or indirectly how imperfect we are. The problem with that is that we can't be perfect. It's an impossible standard, right? So you can go back as far as your childhood. And of course, this doesn't mean that the people who raised you, who parented you, were necessarily ill-intentioned. But, you know, those messages, you're too much this, or you're not enough that. All right? And then the media, well, we get that all the time, especially as women. And, of course, that generates, that generates a lot of business, right? Thinking that if we do this, or if we get that, or if we're like that, we're going to be happy because we're going to be perfect. We're going to have the perfect life. And that's basically a crock of shit. It's not real. It's a myth. Okay? It's, it's more than a myth. It's, it's an untruth. And then, of course, those messages become internalized and we give ourselves those messages. I'm to this, or I'm not enough of that. And if you're lucky, if you're really fortunate, you can pick up those messages. You can actually hear them. You can hear them or feel them or notice them. And when you do, it's wonderful because it gives you the opportunity to change the message. And it also kind of shows you that that message is within you. So relax your entire body. We're going to do a little journey into self-acceptance. See what that feels like to accept yourself, to forgive yourself. And it's not as if we never accept ourselves or never forgive ourselves. But this is radical. This is really doing it in a way where we fully accept ourselves with all the bad decisions we've made, that we make, with all the habits that we have that we want to change, just accepting it all now. So close your eyes. If they're not closed, soften your eyeballs into your sockets. And find your breath. Stay with your breath, okay? If any of those words that I gave caused anxiety, let that go. They're just words. Just allow your body to fully release. All right, so we're going to use some nice breath work as we often do into our Shavasana tonight. So what I'm asking you to do, what I'm inviting you to do here is to take the inhale to send the breath, to imagine that you're, you're taking the breath from your torso when you inhale all the way up. You're bringing it all the way up to the crown of your head, to the top of your head. And then when you're exhaling, you're letting that exhale run down the sides of your body from the crown down the sides of your head and neck, shoulders, sides of your body, all the way down to the sides of your legs and release it from your feet. Inhale, fill up the torso, bring it to the crown. Exhale, let it run down the sides of your body, out your feet. So stay with that. Stay with your breath. Move it that way.
All right. All right, here we go. So with the next exhale, excuse me, with the next inhale, fill up your torso, bring that energy to the crown, and internally say to yourself, I accept myself. With your exhale, run it down the sides of your body. I forgive myself. Inhale, acceptance. Exhale, forgiveness. Next inhale, I love myself. Next exhale, I have compassion for myself. And keep that running through your inhales and exhales. I love myself. I have compassion for myself. It's just accepting where you are right now. You have nothing to do. You have nothing to change. And if you feel resistance to these messages, right? If you feel like they're silly or you don't deserve these messages, just breathe more deeply into them. Try again. Have compassion for who you are and who you were in your younger self. Just a nice warm kindness circulating. Next inhale, I am kind to myself. Next exhale, I fill myself with love. Next inhale, bring in kindness. Next exhale, let love run through your entire body. And the next inhale, I am enough. Next exhale, I feel peace in knowing this. And notice how when you give yourself these messages of love and kindness, acceptance, forgiveness, that the heart opens, the mind opens, the body opens. Because when we accept ourselves, 
with all our imperfections. Our kind and loving nature shines and fills us with a peace and a gentle joy. So just let that nectar flow through you, in you. Gently beginning your transition. So keep your eyes closed and soft. And just begin to move your body a bit, fingers or toes or stretching, whatever feels good. And then roll slowly to your right side. Knees tucked up into your chest. And then slowly bring yourself to seated pose. Okay, and once you're in seated pose, arms out to the sides with your palms up. Oh, heart nice and open, lifting up. Hands namaste overhead. Bring your namaste mudra smack to the middle of your heart center. Rest there, take a big inhale and exhale. And namaste. Thank you, everyone. Okay. So this um, recording will eventually be put on uh, my yoga channel, or my yoga channel, YouTube channel. And that's where I'm putting things instead of sharing them. Uh, with Google Drive because that way they can be there for a much longer time and you don't have to ask me. So it's if you want to go to the YouTube and I probably will put it out like in spring or summer after the winter's over. Um, and that's where the autumn one is, as I said at the beginning. Um, yeah, so it's called, you're welcome, Chris. It's called Laura's, I think it's called your, Laura's Yoga Flow and Meditation. If you have problems, call me and I'll give you the link to it. And if you go under videos, you'll find all the videos. Have a great weekend, everyone. Hopefully this is a good start to yours. Bye.